Hi everybody, my name is Matt Hernandez. I'm a portrait photographer based out of Kentucky. And if you're interested in seeing some of my work, you could go to matthernandezcreative.com. I specialize in senior portraits and athlete portraits. matthernandezcreative.com has both. And then matthernandezphotography.com has only my sports work and all my social media links are on both. So today what I'm gonna walk through with you is one of my most recent composites. I posted some before and after images online and I had a lot of questions about the shadows and if they were the original shadows or if I painted them in myself in Photoshop. So let's go over here to my PSD. Actually, I'm gonna show you, there's the original, or there's the finished image, there's the original photo I took in studio of the subject and then there's the background. Okay, so here's my PSD. So the first thing that I do is I'll open up my background and then I'll open up my subject on, bring that in as a layer on top. And then I'll, if I'm going to keep the shadows from the original image, then I will duplicate the layer and cut them out and then leave the background in the original. So this is going to be my shadow layer, and I duplicated that. And then using the pen tool and the refine edge tool to get some of that hair, I, uh, I cut him out as a separate layer. So these shadows can be used relatively easily. What I'm going to do on my shadow layer, the first thing is I'm going to put a blending mode, apply a blending mode to it to get rid of this background. And multiply makes things darker, so it makes sense for shadows. So make sure I'm on my layer, on my layers palette on the right, I'm going to mouse down to multiply. And you can see right away that's a great start. It's going to knock out all that light area, leave it only the dark parts. So if, if you look, turning that layer off you can tell it's making every, everything a little bit darker and that's because the white backdrop is not lit so it's a little bit off white it's not completely 100 percent white so it's going to make everything a little bit darker so we're going to fix that too but the first thing i want to do is mask this layer so again this is my shadow layer not my cutout so i'm going to go down to my layers at the bottom to the third uh third option over and that's add layer mask and when your layer mask is white everything's going to be visible when you paint black on it, that's when you can conceal parts of the layer. What I'm going to do quickly to get rid of everything but the shadows is I'm going to press G as a shortcut for my gradient tool. You can see here over in the tools bar, it's about halfway down. Make sure it's black to white, and mode to multiply, make sure I'm on my mask. And I'm going to click at the edge of these light stands and the floor here and drag to his foot. And that's creating a smooth transition that's going to conceal what's on that layer using the mask. Now you can press Alt or Option on a Mac and click on that layer mask to see where it's visible. There's the white. Click it again to, to go back to your regular view. Now, I'm gonna keep using my gradient tool to get rid of as much of that unwanted, the unwanted parts of the layer as I can. There, okay, now that looks really, that's a really good, that's a really good start. That looks pretty good. The one problem I see is it's a little, still a little bit darker where that white is visible, where that white, the white backdrop is visible. And it doesn't look like a big deal, but as you build contrast, it, your, when you blend your composite together in Photoshop, that area is going to get darker. So I want to get rid of that. You can use a brush to get rid of it, but then you get into getting too close to the edge of the shadows, and, and that can be tricky. You know, you don't want to take any of the shadow away, but then you're going to leave some of the white. So the way that I'm going to take care of that is actually quicker and easier. I'm going to go over here to my adjustment layers in my layers palette, fourth button over. And I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer over the shadow layer. I'm going to clip it so that it only affects that shadow layer. And you can do that by mousing between the layers and holding alt or option and clicking right there. Now it's only going to affect the shadow layer. So I'm going to go over here to my properties panel, click the white carrot. And I'm going to slide it to the left and see what it's doing. It's brightening up everything on that layer. So there's the four. See how muddy this is around here? And it's hard to tell until you see the after. And then there's after. Now it looks completely natural. All you can see is that shadow. So now, um, I couldn't take the shadows from below him where he was sitting because he was on a black chair. So I did have to take a black brush and paint those in in Photoshop. And you can see that on this layer. Because if there's no shadow underneath him, obviously it's not gonna look realistic. So I did paint those in, but when I can, I use the original shadows, like down here. And that's it. Pretty quick and easy fix. It already looks like he's actually there. And then now, you know, we're going to create adjustment layers on top of it, curves, adjustment layers, overlays, that type of thing. 
use a few plugins, maybe Nick or Topaz, to finish blending it up, blending the composite together and create the final look, which you can see here. So that's it. Thanks for stopping by. Again, you can check out my websites, Matt Hernandez Creative or Matt Hernandez Photography.com if you want to know more about me. And I hope you guys got something out of this. I'll see you again next time.